What are you doing, dude? I'm getting out for a second, man. Okay, let me ask you this. How are we looking on our engine department? We're looking, it's coming along. We're almost done. We're going to be painting this thing tomorrow morning. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I think we got some cleanup right in there underneath yeah. the battery. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Okay, it's underneath down. the battery box. Uh, tell everybody what you sprayed on that to clean it up. Now, it's still going to be clean, but Carburet, what did you spray? Carburetor and choke cleaner or brake cleaner? Brake cleaner? Yeah. So what does the brake cleaner do? It loosens up all the gunk and the muck. It loosens everything up yeah. so you can go ahead and... Even, even if you have it painted and they paint it over the grease, that it'll clean that crap off. It'll break it up where you can get on it with a brush. Elbow grease it. Now when you say brush, you're talking like a... a wire brush or wire a wire brush wheel. Or what about this right here? That's for scotch brite. That's to... You think maybe scotch brite might work down in there to yeah, get all yeah, that all off? Little, once all the little crisps. There you go. Look yeah. at it coming off when you wipe it. Yeah. After using that brake cleaner. Yeah. Yeah. Now, go ahead and tell everybody, we'll be removing some of this electrical stuff off of the uh, engine department when we paint it. Yes. Um, the solenoid for one. Um, let's see, what else do we got over here? We got uh, we got this regulator relay yeah. deal going it, on right here. It's important that if you... When so, you Go ahead, bud. It's important if you use a, a wire brush on a drill or any kind of power equipment, mm -hmm. make sure your wires are out of the way because it will eat them up. Okay. It'll grab are them. Are you talking wires on the wheel? No, what wire, are you talking wires about? in the vehicle, all these wires. Okay, uh, now that you did that, can you show everybody where you fucked up? Yeah, I will. Okay, Look at go ahead. What do you got there? It's where I hit the brush. That's where you hit the brush on it. I didn't we see gotta it, fix that. I got to fix it. Yeah, no shit. I can fix it. And though. we will fix it. Oh, yes, okay. sir. Okay. How much more prepping you got before we're ready to paint? About an hour. All right. We got about an hour left on this. Um, I still see a bunch of gunk down here. You've yeah. been in here jerking off with yourself. I don't know what you're fucking doing. Let's get that done. Jerk look at, me off. Look at all that over there on the uh, inner fender well dripping down. Clean all that off. You're, you know, you keep going over everything that you've done a million times. Get down in the well, cracks and crevices. Well, you gotta do it a million times. Put your gloves on. Get your little wire brush and let's get it cleaned up. Okay, buddy? Okay, Bob. Where's your dust mask I bought you? Oh, yeah. That is not a dust mask. Well, that dust mask don't work with carburetor cleaner. Get the f*** done. You've already done that a hundred times. Get it down there. Down there. Make sure you get up underneath that on the back side, too. There you go. All right. Welcome to DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie, the body shop girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. <laughs> You see, by doing a professional job, it is possible to do this at home. You don't need the big guys. You don't need the large, uh, big body shops that have 6,000 employees that are going to charge you $9 million a fucking hour to do a job that you can do at home and get filthy dirty yourself. Um, I suggest that if this is your first time around and you're restoring a vehicle, to have it soda blasted or hand strip it. Because if you sandblast it immediately, what you have to do is you got to top coat it immediately. It's very important. You can see what I'm using to do this job with right here. We got commercial high performance paint, alkyd black enamel, just like from the factory. It's going to be just like a factory original car. Okay, that's what you want to use right there. That's what you want to use on the engine compartment underneath the car, right there. All right, that stuff's hard as rock and it comes out beautiful. Burns, bro. Yeah. Where's your safety glasses? They're right here. Where? Somewhere. Where they at? Exactly. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Safety. Yeah, I got safety. I need my scotch spray, bro. I don't know where you put it. I dropped it. Son of a bitch. Give me a new one. What do I look like? Your babysitter? 
No. Now do you see what the importance is of safety equipment? This is Pete stripping down the car, prepping the car, and epoxy priming the car. We'll be back when it's all done. I'm going to come back. I'm going to show you how to apply that epoxy primer. I'm going to tell you what the difference is between epoxy and primer. I want you to make sure that you understand it's very important to know the difference between epoxy primer and sandable primer. It's a very, very important. All right, this is the next day, and we finally got our car prepped and ready to paint. Let's take a look at it and see what the difference is between soda blasting and sand blasting and what it takes to get that car prepped ready for epoxy primer. So if we look right here, you can see everything is prepped and ready for epoxy primer. You can see where I took my DA sander with 80 grit and I completely detailed it out using my DA sander and 80 grit. Now I vigorously changed the sandpaper out and when I say vigorously, when the sandpaper was getting dull, I took it off and I put a new piece of sandpaper on it. This is soda blasted. This is what it's looking like when it's soda blasted. You got a nice clean finish, ready for preparation and ready to do something with. If we come over here, I want you to pay close attention to the two separate areas right here, door being one and inner cowling whatever too. You can see that there's a whole different finish going on there. And the problem that you have with this type of finish here, that if you touch that with your hands, the moisture from your hands will arrest it immediately. So you got to be really, really careful. Another thing I want to show you is I took my DA sander. This is a sandblasted area, and then this is soda blasted. When you run your DA sander over that sandblasted area, it gets rid of all that pits and all that nastiness and um, makes it a nice smooth finish. So if you want to do that, that's another option. You can go back and sand all that with 80 grit and it'll make it a nice finish. But since we're going to be painting all this black and applying our epoxy primer to it, um, it's going to come out really, really nice and we don't have to do any of that. Um, Limpy went ahead and uh, detailed out the engine compartment. We didn't want to get that soda blasted or soda, uh, sand blasted due to all the wiring and electrical parts in here and we didn't want to get that ruined so we went ahead and hand hand did that so we could paint it and I believe that's going to come out well. Now one thing about this engine compartment was actually really clean when we got the car so there wasn't much detail. If it would have been full of grease and slime and old and nasty we would have had that sand blasted along with the rest of it. And then what we're looking at here if you watch Limpy in action He's literally removing all the duct tape. Now what duct tape does is when you have something sandblasted, it keeps the sand from ruining the parts that you don't want sandblasted. And the horns is one of them. The reason the horns are being um, taped off is we don't want to get sand inside the horn itself to clog it up. So um, very important to make sure that you protect everything that you don't want sandblasted, including our condenser right there that Limpy has to get all the tape off of. Did you hear me? Yes, sir. All the tape. All of it. Uh, you're not even done taking the tape off of this. Don't you think you ought to finish that? Okay, concentrate on one thing at a time there, guy. All right? All right. And looky here. We got tape on this. I don't know what the fuck it is, but it needs to come off. Sometimes the way to get that tape off, the easy way is to take a razor blade and cut it, and then you can just peel it all off in one sloop without ruining your electrical parts. Okay? So before we do any painting on this, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and remove the uh, starter solenoid on the firewall over there and any other loose parts and then we will take those, put them in a big bundle, we'll tape them off and we'll get it painted. We will not be painting it today due to circumstances beyond our control. Limpy's truck broke down and it's been a uh, really chaos fucking bullshit day with that um, and we don't really need to talk about that. Yes or no? Well, I guess. So you do want to talk about your truck. Yeah, don't that it took all my time up jerking off with your truck instead of working and making money. Should we go ahead and talk about it some more? Yes or no? It's not a minor job, it's a blown motor, bro. Okay, I don't give a fuck what it is. Exactly. And we jerked off with that all day instead of working on something that's productive. What do you care about? It's 6 o'clock at night and we should have had this painted by now. What do you care about? Get the shit off and don't break his condenser by ripping and pulling on it like you're doing. Now where's Norm at? Hey, Norm! Norm! Come here! Okay, we got Concrete Norm with us, which is his nickname is Nitpick Norm. Let's get his angle on this Mustang and see what he has to say. And we'll also get his opinion on 
our uh, new employee over here, Limpy, that's about ready to break that condenser. And if he does a shitty job on it, I'm going to fucking kick his ass myself and get him off my property. Okay, good job. Get the blower and blow that condenser out. Really, really good, bud. Okay. So, what are you thinking of our Mustang being soda blasted versus sand blasting, Norm? Soda blasting's always better. Uh huh. I mean, you do have. Well, it is a little bit more expensive, but what? You don't have to worry about it flash rusting. You don't have to worry about flash rusting. You don't have to worry about the body panels warping. Exactly. What do you think about Limpy, the fucking employee guy over here at SWRNC? You you remember that cartoon, Limpy the Lion? And yeah. Now he's Limpy the Lion and you're Hardy Har Har. Okay, thank you very much, Norm. What's going on with your cars? Uh, well... Not much. Did you sell your Plymouth Roadrunner yet? No. Of course you haven't. Are you selling it? Yes. When? I don't know. Okay. It's a nice car to drive. I don't know yeah. selling it yet. I gotta say one thing, this Mustang is in really, really good shape, Norm. Yes, it is. Don't you agree? I do. It's a yeah. six Mustang. Really, really good shape. Thank you, Norm. We got somebody working over here. We'll talk yeah. to you later. All right. Thanks, Pete. All right. Uh, we need to get Scotch Bright. Scotch Bright some horns up. Get that glue off. Look at this glue. Paint ain't going to stick to that. Remember how we got it off yesterday? Yes, sir. Get some Smart. lacquer thinner. Smart. Get it off. We got some more tape over here you, you missed, Limp. I got to get a spray plate to get that off. Well, let's do something and get that done. Son of a bitch! Did you get lacquer thinner in your eye again? Yeah. What the fuck? That's the third time. Look! Look what I got! Wear them! These are mine, dude. Get your own. <laughs> so what is going on today in the paint booth? What we're doing is we got a 1966 Mustang that we're restoring, complete restoration. Um, it's already semi-restored, all the interior is completely done. So what we did, we went and had it soda blasted, and we had all the bottom of the car sand blasted. And you can see how nice it looks. It's great, it's awesome, and looks better than brand new. And as you can see, it's taped off and ready for our epoxy primer. Now, we had Mr. Bonerhead over here pushing the car around, and I told him, don't touch the metal, and look what happened. You can see where he left the handprint on it. So it's very important to make sure once you DA sand it that you have to seal it. Now, if you get your car soda blasted and you don't touch it, all right, you can leave it that way for a very long time. But once you soda blast the vehicle, you start getting mild rust, just like that right there. And then, of course, if you look at the sandblasted areas that we had, you can see that from the moisture in there, it's already starting to get some rust effects going on right in this area too. Sandblasting will rust out immediately. All right, I'm going to say that again, so be very aware. Do not sandblast the outside of your vehicle. Only the structural parts of your vehicle are to be sandblasted. We got the engine compartment all taped off. Uh, Limpy Limp did a very good job detailing that out. It took him two days and it is ready. So we'll go ahead and dust a coat of sealer on that to make sure we don't get no fisheye or any other contaminations that there's anything on there left. I don't think there is, but uh, we used a lot of brake cleaner and carb cleaner to disinfect the engine compartment, so I think it's ready to go. Many of the body shop girls finishing up on the tape job here, and uh, that's about it. We'll be back after it's all painted and get a good look at what we're looking at, and hopefully this car is gonna be a show car when it leaves my friend Pete's. Your friend Pete's, everybody's friend Pete's, Southwest Rod and Custom. All right, um, here you go. We have now protectively sealed our car in epoxy primer. And then if we look down here, we're not gonna get underneath, but you can see how nice it looks just by looking in here and underneath, sorry. But uh, everything has been painted black. We used a DTM paint, which is a direct to metal, meaning that it's got its own primer built into the paint. This is a one coat paint. Um, goes on very, very thick, and it will last many, many years. It's hard as a rock type finished paint. So uh, the main thing was to get it into sealer. You can see that it really, really looks nice. Um, it actually looks like we've already done the bodywork to this car, but we haven't. So 
We've got our car sealed up. That's the situation you have between soda blasting and sand blasting. The difference is that, this, and the other. If you don't know what we're talking about, go back in this little video set and find out. And hopefully, um, you will be that lucky person that says, I learned it from my friend Pete and Minnie the Body Shop Girl, and I'm doing it right because that's the only way to do it. Right? Don't do it at all. Don't okay. Do it right. Thank you very much. Good job. We need to get all this paper off. Get it undone, get it back down on the floor. We gotta take it over to the motor place tomorrow so we can get the motor and tranny put in and get this thing running. So if you're restoring a car or you're doing anything, um, what can I say, uh, of value in your life to make a difference. And when I say make a difference, I'm talking about doing something. Because that's what makes the difference, is when you're doing something and not doing nothing. Take it easy. We'll see you later. My friend Pete, your friend Pete, over here at SWRC on a Sunday afternoon. And glad I'm here. And I'm also glad I'm alive because I just made it one more day. And I'll get to go to sleep tonight and relax because this job is done. school. Classes don't stop till you know everything.